Well, thank you to, to receive her. What was the motivation for you to attend the Tefa? I think Tiva is a very special fair because it's a fair that you have antiquities, antiques, all the collectibles together. So I always thought that, you know, it is really interesting to see it, you know, to use a different perspective to see contemporary art. After you see old paintings, you come and you look at a contemporary painting. It gives you a different perspective, especially um, this time I'm bringing Chinese contemporary art and I'm bringing a, a thread of the Chinese contemporary art that is, re that is rooted from traditions. I, I always argue about Chinese contemporary art. We have a very strong, um, we have a lot of Chinese artists who is not derived from what the Western contemporary art is about, modernism. So they all derive from traditions. So, and so what better platform is the, is the half tifa? Looking at the, the Chinese antiquities, looking at the, the uh, Renaissance painting, and then coming to see Chinese contemporary. The two artists we, we have chosen are artists that are a direct representation of what we call Yi Pai, Chinese abstract. These Chinese abstract, which is very different from the Western abstract, it is, it is all derived from Chinese calligraphy. Chinese calligraphy, the way that we approach art, the meditative, the, um, the meditative way is when you do Chinese calligraphy, you actually meditate first. When your mind, everything is blank, and then you start applying. And also, and also the consistently doing the same thing again and again and again until you reach, uh, um, you reach a meditative level to approach art. And also, so Chinese calligraphy is also about Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. So when we talk about Chinese abstract, we are talking about these artists translating what Taoism said. There is no nothing absolute in this world. Or Buddha's Diamond Sutra, question, the truth and reality when everything is based on perception. So these artists translate these, these philosophy into Chinese abstract art. When we talk about art in the Chinese sense, in, a, in ancient time, there's not even a word called art. There's not a word called artist. We have something called Chinese literatis. So Chinese literatis are intellectuals. They, they do multidiscipline. They, they make poetry, they read, they write literature. They do calligraphy, they paint, they design teapot, and they do architecture. You are supposed to need to be multidisciplined so that you can inspire from each other discipline. It's somewhat like Bauhaus. You inspire by someone this one to create, um, to create a work. But all that work is not creating to for other people. It's all about self-cultivation. So what we believe is, the more you do something, you are not you're not selling to other people. You're not doing any, but enhancing our inner self. That's what calligraphy is about. Calligraphy is not to sell. So, but this is to sell. With the Western influences, and we have reached since 20th century, we have galleries. Before we don't have galleries. Before the old days in ancient time is you have artisans who create works to sell. You have the Chinese literatis whose ambition and aspiration is to become the Chinese official, the Mandarin, to entering the court of emperor. We don't have no more emperor. We have we have a government, even though now, now Chinese ambitious is still aspire to become a Chinese a government officials. So we have adapted to the Western, the Western way of life, the Western way approach to art. So all of a sudden, since 20th century, we have galleries, we have museums. I mean, it's a globalization world. I mean, today, it's very hard when we talk about self-cultivation, even though it's really important for us to strengthen our personality. Well, you, you have been, as far as I know, one of the, the first galleries to really defend contemporary Chinese artists since uh, not too long, because I want to be polite. <laughs> but you, you are really um, one of the two or three major figures of uh, contemporary, uh, contemporary Chinese art. How do you... So I have two questions. One person, how do you feel about it? Since when you see all this, uh, 
growing market, growing artists that finally are recognized in the world. And the other question will be linked also. How do you feel about the market? I tell you what, when we first started Chinese art in the 90s, it was all about passion. No one, no one cares about Chinese art, no one. I think a very small percentage of people in, actually in the first gallery ever sell Chinese art was in Hong Kong in 1980s. The gallery was called Han Art. And they were selling to expatriate in Hong Kong. So in China there's no market, everywhere there's no market. But you see real people, the real artists have this passion to challenge the world with their art. So it was really passionate and really exciting because I felt that I was there witnessing the evolution of a Chinese culture. I mean, without really knowing, when I was there, I was, I was Hong Kongese. I didn't even understand Chinese culture. So it was a learning process. And then all of a sudden, I think in the 90s, the curators came and all that. All of a sudden, in 2000, everything changed. When the Chinese economy start exploded, then the world come, came to us. I mean, the world is still coming to us. The world come, came to us to look at the Chinese art. Because I always say that art and finance economy is hand in hand together. It, becomes a, it only became a focus because China was, they were emerging China was emerging to become a world power. So in, attention comes. Attention comes then you have collectors, speculators, and it's all in the West they are coming. And all of a sudden, I think the West, I believe it is the West who made the political pop. Because political pop is a time when these artists was under the suppression of government, so they create political power. So it became, it became quite a big thing in, in, in the West before it went back to China. So the Chinese contemporary art of that, of that tone is all created by the West, not by the, and by China. China only became an art market around 2010. After the financial crisis, the China came back they start buying Chinese art and now they start buying international artists. So when you see that, I can see, I mean, I'm witnessing the whole evolution of Chinese art and then emerging with the collectors because the collector base for a long time, even Chinese, contempt, Chinese artists, they were only buying antiques. Chinese antiques, Chinese an antiquities, they were not touching anything of Chinese contemporary. So it's only starting in 2010. People start buying the contemporary art, uh, Chinese contemporary art, not because many of those in, in China, not because they want to collect, they want to speculate. And now I think is another phase now. Now are the younger gen generation coming into and they are collecting now.